up everybody? So we're back out in the shop with another Shop Talk Tuesday. And you're gonna hear some background noise. It's my ACs. I've got two ACs in here now, just because it's like 100 and something degrees every single day where I live. So gotta have the ACs going. If I turn those off just for this video, by the time the video was done, it would be probably 15, 20 degrees warmer in here than it is right now. Because this shop, it's not insulated. I've got, you know, everything going on right here, like the sheetrock and all that stuff. But if you see up here, this is just wood. It's all open. I need to get some uh, vent fans to pull out the hot air from the top so that the ACs don't have to work as hard. But y'all are going to hear that in the background. Now, if you're new to this video series, what this is all about is a commentary based type thing where I pretty much talk to y'all about what's going on on the channel, talk about some stuff that I saw in the comment sections, whether it be for YouTube comment section, Facebook, my Instagram, uh, emails, all that type of stuff, and I talk about what I think is important. Then we go into kind of what we have working in the background and stuff that's going to be making it into the videos and things like that. In this video, y'all are going to get to choose something, so I'm going to talk to you about that whenever we get to that point. But uh, pretty much... I'm going to talk about something and then we'll go into what we have working that's going to be making it into the videos or might not be making it into the videos. Then we go into um, a viewer's knife section. I'm going to do the viewer's knife section a little bit different on this because this is another one where I got sent multiple pictures of different knives and uh, I'm going to do it a little bit different. Y'all will see that when we get to that point. But guys, let's jump into it. Now, for the, the section of this where I talk about something. I'm going to kind of add on to what we talked about in the last video, so the last Shop Talk Tuesday. Now, I kind of focused a little bit on, um, you know, buying a custom knife and maintaining it. I focused a little bit on selling one, but in this video, I'm going to just talk about, let's say, I, I, get, I see a lot of the things. Uh, somebody will post a picture in a forum and say, hey, how much do you think I should sell this for? Or, how much did y'all sell y'all's first knives for? Do you think this is ready to sell? Or should I make more knives before I sell this one? And I thought it was a good thing to talk about because there are a lot of people who are watching videos like this who are deciding to start making knives and then possibly sell them. So, with this video, Let's talk about that. Let's break it down. Now, whenever it comes to you wanting to sell your first knife and you're trying to figure out how to price it. So there's a few ways to think about that. You know, is there a market for it where you're at? Do you need to create a name for yourself first before you try and sell them? I mean, those are things that you kind of want to figure out. You might live in a town where nobody even thinks about carrying a custom made knife for an EDC or anything like that or you might not have many knife collectors around you. Probably pretty rare in America <laughs> but uh, we, we pretty much all like knives. It is what it is <laughs> but whenever it boils down to it you need to figure out uh, whether you're making knives in an area where people are going to want them. I will tell you this, most of your first knives are going to be sold to friends and family uh, through you posting pictures of them on Facebook or uh, talking about hey I make knives and they go well can you show me a few pictures of them you show it to them and they go do you sell those and you say I can and then you'll sell one and boom you sold your first knife or your fifth knife that you made there you go it is kind of that easy and kind of that simple but if you're wanting to get to a point to where you're selling you know five knives a month or more it's going to be all about you kind of putting yourself out there and letting everybody know that you sell knives whether you're going to do it on Facebook whether you're going to do it on Instagram you know show people that you're making knives and doing them consistently uh, plus tell your friends about them and that's if you want to make them to sell there are a lot of people that make knives to give them away they make knives to keep them because they're knife collectors, they get into making knives so they can make every knife that they ever thought was cool and they keep them. Uh, you're going to have people who pretty much only make heirlooms 
you know, they, they take files, take tools, or take steel and turn them into heirloom knives for, you know, their kids or cousins or uncles or aunts, all that type of stuff. But let's say you want to sell your first knife and you're trying to figure out how to price it. Again, it's going to be all depending on the market that you're in. There's going to be areas where you're going to sell a knife and what you could sell for $300 might sell for $75 in different cities. And that's where the presence, the Facebook presence and Instagram and stuff like that because you're going to have people that see your knives in a broader area and they might offer you the $300 price point because again in your local area they don't understand the stuff that goes into a custom knife so to them $75 is a lot of money because they're so used to spending $30 at Walmart and they don't understand why you who took a leaf spring and turned it into a knife how did that get so expensive why is that $300 because a lot of them don't do things with their hands and they don't understand that tools cost money, equipment costs money, abrasives cost money, woods cost money. There, there's handle skills that I have that alone, just the handle skills by themselves cost $65. So you have somebody who's looking at a $75 knife thinking that's expensive when you could take a piece of stabilized burl like this and you'll see those for fifty, sixty, seventy dollars, and that's just your wood. That's not including any of the steel materials, your time that it took, any of those things. So whenever you come to think about how you're going to price it, for one, think about how many hours you put into it. Think about your materials. You know, did you have to pay for the steel? Did you have to pay for the wood? Um, if you didn't have to pay for the steel and you didn't have to pay for the wood, you might not need to charge as much. Uh, but again, think about how many hours you put into it, how much you would want to get paid per hour to make something like that. Think about your abrasives. Did you go through a few belts in that knife making process? How much were those belts? You know, how much is your time worth? How much is your materials worth? How much are your tools worth? And think about that whenever you go to price it. And don't be afraid to ask what it's worth. You've got a lot of people that might do that math and figure out that their knife costs $200 and they're afraid to ask $200 for it. I know I was. Whenever I first started making knives and I was making really nice knives, I was afraid to charge $125 for a knife that was absolutely worth $250. Worth, uh, I was afraid to ask 125. That was knife, sheath, everything. And I might have had $100 wrapped into it. So I was paying myself $25 for the amount of effort that I put into my knives. And I put a ton of effort into them because I'm super picky. That was crazy. And now I know what I should price them at because of what my time is worth, what my name is worth. Not that my name's worth a lot, but you know, you have to factor in those things. Now, I will tell you this. There's a flip side to that. Don't price gouge. Don't say, hey, my knife is worth $400 when all of the comparable knives that are like that are going for 200 Just because, you know, you might have a big head and you might think your knives are worth a ton of money because your name's on it, and boom, you're trying to charge $400 for a knife that everybody knows is worth about 200 so don't do stuff like that. Um, also, if you're going to make a custom knife for somebody, I'll tell you, if you get into the process of where you're making a list of people who you gotta make knives for, my biggest word of advice is do not accept any money for that project until you either start it or almost finish with it or finish with it. Do not accept any money. Let's say you're six months out and there's people that are a year out in their books for making knives for people. Let's say you're, let's just say you're three months out from making a knife for somebody and you let them pay you for it. As soon as they give you money, their internal clock starts ticking. So even though you told them it's going to be three months, they're going to be asking you updates on that thing for the entire 
three months and you haven't even started it yet because at the three month mark that's when you start on the knife and it might take you two weeks after that so whenever I first started selling knives uh, and taking commission orders that's what happened with me um, I let people pay me for a couple of the knives up front and this was whenever I was doing daily vlog working 70 hours a week uh, at my regular job and doing all the editing all the filming plus the knives that I was doing for the channel and I was trying to fit in customers knives and I did not give myself enough time whenever I told the people hey it would probably be about this long because I thought about okay well my videos you know if I build a custom knife it might take two to three weeks to do a crazy custom knife so let's just give them that time not realizing that I was trying to add in extra knives on top of the fact that I'm already making those custom knives for the videos. So as of right now, whenever I decide to make someone a custom knife, I would, like they're going to do a commissioned piece, I will not accept any money for it. Partly because even if at the end of it, whenever I get it built, if they decide not to buy it, I'll be able to sell it to somebody. Somebody's going to be willing to buy that knife. but you can get into such a weird gray area whenever you decide to take money even if it's for a deposit for the knife let's say you give they give you twenty five dollars well, if they give you some type of money again their internal clock starts ticking and they're wondering when they're going to get the thing because they're so excited it's just like you order something off of amazon that might be uh... it's like a three to five day delivery you're not banking on it getting there on the fifth day you're banking on it getting there the second or third day you're hoping it gets there faster than the three day mark you're not worried about the fifth day and if that got there on the seventh day you bet your ass you'd be pissed so it's definitely something to where you just think about not accepting any of that money until you either start the project and you know it's only going to take you a week and a half two weeks or something like that and they're cool with it or you're halfway through the project or maybe even at the end of the project just to make your life a lot easier so that you're not stressing out because you have X amount of dollars from this person and you haven't even touched their knife so just something to think about there uh, whenever you start trying to charge for your work so you do not get stressed out I wish somebody would have told me this whenever I first started because it would have made my life a lot easier so I'm trying to give you all that information now um, now, again, whenever it comes to you selling one of your pieces, make sure it's something that you're comfortable with working with, especially if it's for a commission piece. Don't let somebody talk you into making something that you're not comfortable with because the last thing you need to do is practice on a customer's piece. So don't do that. Don't practice on a commission piece unless the customer is a hundred percent cool with you practicing on it because again it might take longer uh, let's say a customer commissioned me to make one of these file knobs right here and they sent me their grandpa's 50 year old file it's the only one they have and I had never like really made those and now I'm gonna have to try and repeat something let's say I only made one and now I'm gonna have to try and repeat the hardening process the shaping process all that stuff on this 50 year old piece of steel dude that's that's risking it you know of course I've done a lot of file knives and I've got a lot of experience with those but that, that's just one thing let's say somebody gives you their grandpa's k-bar or bayonet and they want you to restore it and you've never even messed with that type of steel you don't, you don't know what type of steel it is and you're trying to go through the process of messing with this thing and you just you ruin it that's the last thing you want to mess with you know it's one of those things where you want to push your boundaries but push your boundaries on stuff that you're going to keep for yourself or that you might sell afterwards don't push your boundaries on something that someone has already paid you for or commissioned you for work within your boundaries practice on everything else so just a little bit of, again, advice there because you want to be able to offer somebody something that you know you can do unless they're saying, hey, I want you to try and make this. I'm willing to pay for whatever the outcome is. And then you go that route. 
so guys hopefully that info I know it's again this is a long video but hopefully that info helps y'all out uh, if y'all want me to do a few more videos just dedicated to things like the beginner getting into knife making and my little bits of advice for what I've went through I'll do a few videos just dedicated to that uh, just let me know comment section if you want to see something like that or if you want me to do a little series based on those things but these are a few things the last video for the shop talk Tuesday that I did that's good info this is really good info because this is where people get in over their head and I do still have some more things that I want to talk to y'all about but for this video that's enough <laughs> now let's talk about what we have coming up now I am of course in the background working on these three heirloom knives right here so these are for, of course for customers that I went ahead and let purchase them I do not plan on making that knife with that combination of wood and file and all that ever again those are gonna be the only four so these three plus the one that I did back in the days for that video those are gonna be the only four that I'm ever gonna make now I will make other knives with those thick files but when it comes to the rivulet style with that wood combination and all that those are the last ones I'm not making any more um, now I've got a little knife it's a little file knife that I've been working on. This is, we got some oil on there if you're wondering what that is on the blade. This is a modified version of that military inspired knife that I was doing. So this has got a little bit more of a drop point, a little bit shorter handle, just a good feel right there. And again, I did bring that hole a little bit higher, but that is just a good little drop point version of that knife really like the way that one's turning out that one's i'm not really filming it i might film the handle process on that because i'm going to be doing another layered handle with that same red and white that we have on that knife right there so that red and white that we have on that chunky tanto uh, except for i'm going to do it layered like i did on the hunter knife where i do red white and then red so we're going to do that so whenever we shape it the white will be peeking out from the red all the way around it so i think that's gonna be pretty cool i might go ahead and show that in a video uh just to be a random video that pops up but one of the things that i want to get y'all's opinion on is which knife y'all want me to start next so do y'all want me to do the big uh, quarter inch thick ADC RV2 kind of chopper? Or do you want me to do the forged 5160 uh, Kukri EDC? So Kukri styled EDC sized knife. Uh, let's say Kukri styled because everybody's crazy about the Kukris. It is not a Gurkha Kukri. It is just a Kukri styled EDC knife. But uh, y'all tell me whether y'all want me to do the forged 5160 knife uh, first or if y'all want me to do the big quarter inch thick chopper uh, with the ADC RV2. Either way, I'm down to do one of them. I'm just trying to figure out what y'all want me to start with for the next project. And uh, that's pretty much the end of this stuff. Uh, guys, let's hit this viewers knife section so i'm going to do this one a little bit different i'm actually going to do like a cutaway where uh, i'm just going to be talking over the pictures i want y'all to really be able to see these pictures so i'm going to put them full screen and i'm going to be talking in the background uh but there are four knives uh some of them are 80 crv2 one of them's 1095 and i'll tell you about that whenever i'm talking about them but these things are awesome these are by chris jones and chris thank you for sending these pictures in I'm happy to show them off. I think you did an amazing job, and one of them is a kind of EDC Kukri style. Uh, mine is gonna be shaped a little bit different than that, but you'll actually get to see kind of what one looks like. And I'll tell you, the one that he did is the best looking EDC size Kukri that I have seen, and I did a search through Google and Bing and all the different places to see EDC size Kukri's 
and his is actually the best example that I've seen. So that's badass, Chris. But let's go ahead, let's jump into those, and I'll talk to you about those now. Well, let's start with the EDC Kukri. This one is made out of ADC RV2 with black ash scales and a custom mosaic pin that has his logo that he made. This one was designed for his daughter and has a matching ferro rod handle and kydex sheath. Looks really good. Love the design. This one is his most popular knife. He calls it the Ridgeback. It's a fighter style knife made out of ADC RV2 with green and black honeycomb scales and a diamond lanyard hole in the back which I really like and I like the glass breaker that he has on the back of that. That's a great design knife. This one is his buoy knife that he made. I was thinking about doing a hidden tang knife and he thought that I would like the design of this one. I really do like the design of that plus the way the leather sheath is. That's top notch work right there. Then we have his EDC. This is made out of 1084. It has black ash burl scales and this was his first attempt at doing a multi-piece scale so with the liners going vertical like that that's a good looking EDC and I like the thumb jumping on the spine. So guys what did y'all think about those knives? I mean Chris you did an amazing job I think you did absolutely phenomenal on all four of those knives and I think all the guys are going to agree those looked awesome. I mean, man, you create some really, really, really nice looking knives. And thank you again for sending those in. Guys, if you haven't yet, submit some pictures of your knives. I would love to show them off on the channel. And uh, if you're a fellow YouTuber, make sure you link your YouTube channel in that email. Guys, email is in this description below. Send them there so I can check them out so we can post them and let everybody see them. Guys, y'all tell him what y'all think about those in the comment section below. Plus. Again, tell me about the uh, um, knife that y'all want me to make next and uh, any of the other stuff that I told y'all to tell me about in the video. <laughs> Guys, that's pretty much the end of this one. If y'all would, give this video a thumbs up, share this video or a video I've done in the past that might be your favorite. And guys, if you haven't yet, bottom corner, hit that subscribe button so you get notified for the stuff that we have that's coming up. Uh, we do have a bunch of videos that are going to be coming up. Plus, I'm going to do a couple of videos that are complete builds from start to finish. So we'll have those. And uh, guys, thank y'all for coming by. Thank y'all for checking this out and spending your time with me. Y'all have an amazing day. Stay safe out there. I'll catch y'all next time.